2020, exam two, question 11, financial. Okay, so we've got a, a reducing balance loan at 4.1% per annum, compounded monthly. We know after four years, we've got this much money. After seven years, we got this much money. And it says monthly repayments are constant. They don't change. And there may be a change in the final payment, although it's not a final repayment question. I'm going to add that as a bonus later. In the first seven years, which is 84 monthly payments, because seven times 12 equals 84, um, that's what you get. Now, you need to then work out from this point how many more monthly repayments uh, will Samuel need to fully repay the loan. So what you're looking at is a situation where you've got a loan like so. This is your time. This is your dollars. And reducing balance loans kind of look like this shape. So you know after four years, you've got this point, which is 329587.25. And then you've got this point, which is after seven years, which is 280. Slippery screen does that sometimes to 80.875.15. And so that is actually 84 months. That uh, is four times 12, it's 48 months. So the difference between these two in years, that's three years, which is 36 months. So you don't know your starting point, but you can just treat the four years as your starting point, And then you've just gone forward three years. Excuse me if you can hear some cockatoo squawking there. So this is why the number of payments is 84 minus 48, which is exactly 36, because that's three times 12, because it's three years. Remember, you can use that uh, space up there as a calculator. We put in the 4.1, because that's the interest rate. And then we imagine we're starting the loan at the fourth year. So we put that number in as our starting loan. Remember, when you start a loan, banks give you money. Um, and then the final value, you have to give back whatever you still owe the bank. So that's why we put a minus here, very important. And then 12 and 12, because it said monthly, then you just press the PMT button, like so. And so this tells us uh, that the payment, which is the thing that we were missing, we don't know what that monthly payment is, is $2,400. Remember, it's minus $2,400 because you're giving money to the bank. And this will help us now because now we can uh, got enough information to do the financial solver to get to this point. So now we can start a new loan starting from here, going to here, and then we can work out what that time difference is. You see, we didn't have the payments before, now we do. So now we take that payment, we leave it there on the calculator. This, this doesn't do anything, so don't worry about that. It's too small to do anything to screw up your calculation. But we now we imagine we're starting at that seven year period. So this is now the present value. So before it was negative because it was the end of the loan, but now it's positive because it's the start of the loan. Can you see the transition there? And then you know your final value is going to be zero. And then you press the end button and you get this answer, which is 150. And you can see from here that you haven't fully paid off the loan because 0.695 means you have to pay, keep paying the loan uh, beyond the 149th period. So you're going to have to have some extra money. Um, might not be 2,400 though, because it's only 0.6953306 of, uh, of a payment. So the answer is 150 more months because with time periods, unless it said, if it was, if it said like 149.001, then you can round down. But uh, in most cases, if there's a significant decimal there, uh, you have to round up with time periods. You haven't paid it off until you've paid it all off. Trust me, banks will let you get away with that. Now I'm gonna add some bonus content, which is not in the question, but it said the, f the, the final payment will be lower and there's often a final repayment kind of question. So I just wanna show you a technique for working that out. Now, we did before the calculation that we worked out that we needed 149.6953306 payments. So what I'm saying is, you just like we worked out the payments before, you got dollars and you got time, we're going to go all the way from here to here. Now we're imagining we're starting the loan at 288.75.15. And we're just going to, uh, we saw that it 
took 149 time periods to get to a point. So we're going to go, to, and then there's a little bit left over. So this is the 149th time, uh, monthly period here. And we want to work out that value and then just do one step and then work out the payments. So this is the trick I do to do it. I think it's a bit more um, resilient. So I work out where I'm going to be at 149 payments. So I say not 149.695, three, three, blah, blah, blah. I want to be at 149 payments. How much do I still owe? So to do that, I put in that loan money, put in my payments. I uh, didn't worry about that decimal placey stuff. And I find that my final value is this. So that means I'm at this point of 1663.98. And we can, uh, it's okay to do that to say the 0.98. And so uh, I put that number in here. Let me just clear that out of the way. And I imagined I did it just for one time period. I borrowed $1,663.98 uh, with the 12 and 12 for the monthly, and then uh, find out what the payment was. And so you can see that that makes sense, that it wasn't a full payment. Um, it's 1669.67. So if they asked you, what is the amount of the final repayment? You go 1669.67 like that so surprising they didn't actually ask it but it's good to know that you can actually calculate that final repayment it is a common question i just wanted to put it out there how to do it on the financial solver